Okay. Go ahead. Yes. Hello, everybody. Um, we welcome you to a, a live stream hosted uh, by Marcus and Michael on Nothing Media. And uh, we are uh, having two guests today, Robert Salzman and uh, Jim Newman. Hello. Hello. Hi. And uh, I'm pretty excited about all this because I've never hosted a, a podcast like this in the live stream. And I uh, just want to introduce uh, the both uh, Robert and Jim. So uh, Jim Newman, I know a little bit longer than Robert. I was uh, meeting him at, uh, at his uh, studio in Vienna, talking about uh, uh, this, what it is like, um, the message which he is presenting. And uh, Robert, I met you, uh, I think it was 2019 in, in your place at the gathering. And I, um, you wrote a book, The 10,000 Things, and another book, uh, Depending on Nothing. And uh, this whole community, which we are like uh, participating on Facebook and on YouTube, and with all the pandemic Zoom situation now virtually, um, is like uh, brought you. Two together now because, uh, like Marcus, <laughs> was uh, very excited to to let you both talk about your topics. So we are uh, live on YouTube. Hello, everybody on YouTube also. And if you want to join the Zoom, uh, you can join. It's public. So. Maybe um, I give you some words to speak. Hello, Robert. Maybe you can start to introduce yourself a little bit. Okay. Um, I think if it's okay, I think I'd like to read something. Um, that will, some people know how, how it happens that we're doing this, but I think most of the people who view this now and later will not know that. So what happened is I got a question from one of my readers and it said this, cheers, Robert. I have read your two books and viewed many of your videos. I just listened to an interview between Sam Harris and Jim Newman and thought of you as I listened. At one point, Jim mentioned having felt that he could starve to death and that would be okay. And I recalled that you said something rather like that in one of the gathering videos whilst speaking about no self. You said that you liked some of Sam's books. So I wonder if you have heard the interview and what you think of it. Thanks so much for your wonderful commentaries. Best wishes, Matthew. If you have not heard the interview, here's the link. So I clicked on the link and watched the whole thing. It's a rather long interview with Sam Harris and Jim Newman. Um, and uh, after uh, listening to the interview, this is how I responded. Hi, Matthew, thanks. I had not heard the interview. I don't follow Sam's stuff. And this was my first exposure to Jim's viewpoint, but I just listened to the whole thing. Jim's perspective could sound like the platitudes of Neo Advita, but I don't think it is. He and I may not agree on everything, but on several basics, we are on the same page. Primarily, we seem to agree that there is only this and none of it can be understood or mastered because there is no one apart from it, apart from what is to get a grip on it. We agree also that consciousness is best seen not as some kind of container or emptiness in which the world arises, but better understood as the noticing and implicit judgments that bring myself into existence. He called this a cloud of knowing, which seems a useful way of regarding it. The truly awake perspective knows nothing of ultimate matters. 
We agree also that self-improvement, which is Sam's focus, is only a fantasy that continues until it doesn't. This mystery is never actually solved, as Jim put it. Sam kept talking about paths because he wants to teach, but Jim, like me, was clear about not recognizing any paths. As I like to ask, how can there be a path from here to here? Sam seemed focused on the idea of ending anger and other forms of suffering once and for all, which I regard as a fool's errand. Jim replied to him, as I would have, any feeling can arise anytime and no one is doing that. Jim's statement that consciousness is an experience in separation hit me just right. For me, there is no splitting of the world into what is on the one hand and consciousness of what is on the other. This is a subtle point that I have raised often in my critique of mindfulness as a practice. Mindfulness adds to the cloud of knowing, but the knowing that constitutes that cloud appears as speculation and fantasy called knowledge. Mindfulness reminds me of a dog trying to catch its own tail. This is where Sam seems stuck. He is a mindfulness teacher and, develop, and developer of a mindfulness app. Apparently Jim's perspective was more radical than Sam was prepared to take in, but Sam was unwilling to allow that he might be missing something. Whenever Jim pointed out that he and Sam were not talking about the same thing, Sam was quick to deny that, too quick. I liked the two of Sam's books I read, but here he seemed resistant to seeing that what he thinks of as non-duality might differ radically from what Jim is talking about. As for mindfulness app, oh please, the subtext of any guided meditation is hypnosis and what is being ingrained is suggestibility. So thanks for um, listening to that. Reading is always a bit difficult. Uh, so that's how I find myself here. And um, I'm open to um, hearing what Jim has to say. Yeah, uh, thank you, Robert. So yeah. it's your turn, Jim, please. Um, so I'm here because you guys invited me. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically it. I don't have any comment on it. I mean, I was at the the, the conversation with Sam, and um, so I know what Robert's talking about his seeming unwillingness to 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 that I might be talking about something that he didn't already know about. Um, yeah, and so I think maybe we could just get into questions and see what we both think of the things that you ask. Yeah, I would like to bring my own question first. And that is something that I, I heard you say um, a while ago. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if you still see it like, like that, but Jim, you said that um, what you talk about is not acceptance. It's not about acceptance because there's nobody yeah. to accept anything. Whereas yeah. Robert, as far as I can see, sometimes says that his, his uh, message actually points to a radical self-acceptance of all the areas of, of what one is. Hmm. So, yeah. so could, you, could you pick up that topic? Yeah. So acceptance for me would be something that the, 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 one, of the, one of the experiences of separation is um, fundamentally the experience that something needs to happen. And so acceptance, feeling like acceptance needed to happen would be just a part of that experience of separation. It just is the same sort of dream. What, what I'm pointing to or what the message is pointing to is that there is never separation. Acceptance or non-acceptance are both unconditional freedom. Do you have a comment on that, Robert? Um, I'm just struggling here with the setup. Um, somehow I've lost the window I was reading in another app. I'll, I'll get back to that in a second, if you'll forgive me. <laughs> sure. Sure. <clears throat> well, how do I, I've got this thing all shrunk it down now, and I don't know how to, I don't know. In the to, upper left-hand corner, there might be a green button. Uh, what I have is a narrow strip. 
And in the upper left hand corner, there might be a green button, a red, yellow, and green. And if you put the push the green one, it'll get bigger. There's blue. All yeah. oh, right. Yeah. I don't know what that is. Yeah, I've screwed the pooch here, but I'll see. <laughs> Why don't you guys continue for a moment in your conversation, and I'll sure, sure. I'm, not, I'm not really that tech savvy, apparently. Yeah. I only think I am. Yeah, the, the, this 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 question that I just asked is is, is part of a, a pair, and, and the other the other half of that question is exclusivity because I also heard you, uh, Jim, speak about that your message is the end of exclusivity and that yeah. uh, that uh, like th that message cannot be owned. You cannot you cannot have yeah. that. Yeah. And I think that my conclusion would be that that you are saying that um, I mean your experience is not exclusive and so is mine. Like we are basically are we like in the same experience? I mean, in the same reality? Well, so what I hear in the question is there's the experience of separation. There's two positions. And what you're asking is, are these same, both of these positions within the same experience? And the illusion is that there's two positions. So of course, we're not in the same experience. There aren't two positions to be experienced. So what, what, and it's not my message. It never was anyone's message. It just is, you know, a pointing out that what is has no separation and no positions. So it becomes my message when someone's listening to it and thinks that it's something to understand, learn or hear, or that it's coming from a separate position and that it's going to tell you something that you don't already know. What's obvious is nothing is known here that that isn't already. The separation is that that might know something or have the experience of knowing something that feels separate to here, and that's the illusion. So this message is nothing to give anybody. It's not, it's not coming from a position of knowing that I'm gonna teach you something. It actually is, isn't coming from any position at all of coming together. It's a response to a position that says, I'm a position over here. How do I find no position? That sounds great. And the response is, there is no no position. <laughs> There's no position and no no position. There's nothing to be done. That experience of position, that experience of separation is an illusion. Okay, I am back. So feel free to include me in any of this. Yeah, now. come on in. Well, you had, so, uh, I think it was Marcus had asked me a, a question. Do you remember that, Marcus? Yeah, there's, there's, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm starting this whole meeting with two questions. One is about acceptance, which I see is a, there's a difference between Jim and you, because you, you're sometimes speaking about radical self-acceptance, and, and Jim says uh, there's nobody to accept anything. Uh -huh. And the other, the other part of the question is uh, exclusivity, because uh, I, I heard Jim talk about exclusivity and, and the end of exclusivity. Whereas I'm hearing from you that you're saying you, you can only know your own world. And that's the end of it. So I, I'm seeing like a difference here between you two. Well, yeah, I don't know how much of a difference it really is. All of these matters, as I understand it, is a matter of perspective. And um, what Jim seems to be saying is that these things that that he discusses are not coming from any particular point of view, but are more an understanding of what already is and can't be altered. In each moment, I, I say the same thing in, in a sense, in each moment things are as they are and can't be any different. Um, but I don't see that no self is a kind of truth. I don't know if Jim does or not. He seems to feel that there is no self at all ever. And I don't see things that way. Um, in, in phenomenology, which is the science of noticing what is, an, a basic concept is the uh, 
what the phaneron, the phaneron, the phaneron is the totality of everything it appears to mind, whether it corresponds to anything real or not. And so I would say that neither Jim nor Robert has any way of knowing if our thoughts, if what we see, if this conversation or any of it corresponds to anything real or not. We could be dreaming, we could be hypnotized. An evil magician could have put all these ideas in our mind and is manipulating us. We just don't know that. So I have no certainty about any of these matters. But I know that I seem to exist as a self. And in my ordinary life, I honor that. Whether that corresponds to anything real or not, I have no idea. Yes? Mm, yeah, yeah, I get that. And, and here, that second step just isn't made. There's no need to understand the appearance. Well, I, I, it's, it's, left, it's left at the, at the point which you described that it is basically unknowable. Yes, well, I'm saying the same thing. Yeah. Sense, yep. I, I, I have no idea what any of this is. And no, I, nobody does. And, and I, never, I, ne I never expect to know any more about it than I know about it right now, because this, yeah. is, all, this is all I can know. What mm. I can know is what I know now. Mm. I can know my memories, but those memories are, are here now. They, right. they may seem to refer to some past that I once lived, but I have no way of knowing that. Right. So for me, everything is happening as it does, and there's no way to get a grip on any of it. Mm -hmm. We just live. We live without mm -hmm. knowing. Mm -hmm. But um, I, don't think you, I don't think you're in this spot but a lot of people use that as a psychological defense to avoid dealing with ordinary life. They say, well, it doesn't matter anyway, but it really does matter. It, 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 everything matters if it matters to you. It, it's, it's no good to take this kind of a, epistemological investigation and turn it into an excuse for not caring. And that, my, my main critique of, of uh, non-duality as it's often unrolled or, or discussed is that it, too often it's a psychological defense that people glom onto because it stops them from, from needing to care, care about the health of their, their husband or wife or partner or their pet or their own health. These things, we do care about these matters. And it's no good to pretend that because there's no self, nothing matters. That's, that's my point of view on this. Mm. I don't know if you agree. I, would, I wouldn't say it that way. I don't think we actually do agree there because it's obvious that nothing does matter because well, there's matter, matter would have some sort of implied intention to the appearance. And, and it obviously is completely, I mean, it's, as you say, that's completely unknowable. Where does matter come out of the unknowability? Well, it's not, you say it's obvious that nothing matters. It's not at all obvious to me. I, 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 would, I would never say that nothing matters. No. I can't possibly yeah. say that. Yeah. A lot of things matter to me, many things. Yeah, yeah. And, and in my ordinary life, I have to deal with things as best I can. I, yeah. it's not, it doesn't work for me to say we can't know anything about this and therefore there's nothing to be done. Well, that, that's not what's being said. Oh, then I'm misunderstanding. Sorry. Yeah. No, it's just that things happen, of course. But no one does it and it doesn't happen because it matters. Um, well, that yes, I understand that point of view. It, it, it's, that's, that's one perspective. I don't think that's definitive or self-evident. I think that's one way of regarding experience, but we can't deny that, that, that there is experience. Yes, I do, actually. I don't deny there's experience. I, it's obvious there isn't any real experience. Uh, you, well, you see, 
let me take a step back. I, I um, in the Sam Harris interview, I understood that you had been with one teacher for about 15 years and uh, seeking whatever. And that wasn't entirely satisfactory. <laughs> uh, later, seeking never is. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I'm not sure about that either. There may, it, it, it may, it may be, it may be necessary. I don't know. I mean, it I, isn't. Sorry. Uh, Sorry. Well, no, that's fine. Interjecting. I mean, well, okay. You, you, you have a way of concluding and, and saying things are self-evident, obvious. These are words you use. It's obvious, yeah. self-evident. Yeah. It's airtight. Mm -hmm. My way of seeing, well, you see, you don't have, you, you claim to not have a way of seeing, and yet, yeah. and yet you do have a way of seeing, which is mm. obvious or self evident. Mm. To say that something is obvious, what I hear is it's obvious to you. But you will say there is no me. So yeah. it's, not obvious yeah. to, it's not obvious to anyone. Yeah, but, exactly. That's the reason the word obvious is actually unsatisfactory, really. It's just a way of getting around the fact that no one sees there's nothing happening. Um, yeah, well, you see, this is so interesting because I, uh, you, you and Sam had a lot of overlap, which I don't share, you both, did a lot of spiritual seeking. You both went to India. You sat with Papa G. All of these kinds of things that I never did. I never got into this world at all until recently, relatively recently. And when I did, I was a bit shocked at how much certainty there was. Truth with a big capital T mm -hmm. was never part of my vocabulary. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't see that there. And but you seem to be speaking as if there is this truth. Nobody knows it. I'll go along with you there, but but so it's not a truth. Well, okay. Nor is it certainty. See, certainty comes out of a position, and the suggestion is there isn't actually any real position. So anything could happen, anything could change, but nothing really happens because it's not happening to a position. But that's already what you said at the beginning. You then take another step out of the unknowing into things do matter to you and your life. Well, and that, that just doesn't seem to happen here. Um, uh, um, I think there's a distinction to be made here. I'm not sure if I'll be able to make it clear or not. Mm. In, in, in one sense, nothing matters because what happens is all that all that there is. So there's no, yeah. alter, there's no alternative to, to yeah. this. Yeah. So you can't really say something is good or bad. It just is, it is what it is. Yeah. I think you and I agree on that. Mm. But then you seem, and I'm not sure of any of this, I'm feeling my way around. Mm. The, the jargon you use is very confusing to me. Mm. So, I'm trying to tune in the station, Jim, if you allow me to feel around here a little. Yes, in a sense, we can't say that anything really matters because everything just is what it is and it can't be any different, including oneself or lack of self, whatever it is that just is what it is. But are you human? Nobody knows. Like you've already said, nobody knows. Well, see, I would not say that. What I, what no, I, would, what I know I, you don't. What you I start would. off with saying you don't know. There's yeah. only unknowing. But yeah. then you come back and say, I'm human. And just one other point as we're moving through, as we're feeling through each other's sort of mind, mind maps, um, yeah. you say what is is all there is. And, but that, that then is obviously not is. So what is, is neither is nor not is. It's a, it's a mystery. Yes, I agree. I, I would agree with you that all of this is a mystery. Yeah. We, nobody, there's no one standing outside of this with a perspective mm. on it. I, we agree on that. So that's already, we're, we're partway up the mountain. We'll 
put a piton in there, right? We're good there because a lot of people would think this, this is an absurd conversation on the face of it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but we agree on that. There's no one standing outside of, there isn't really even, even an outside. It's hard to- Totally. Put, right. It's hard to put- But that's the end of the conversation, really. Well, that's the end of it for you. But yes. that, that's right. And okay, but see, that's, that's what I, when I first uh, came upon uh, Tony Parsons' work some years ago, I heard an interview with him. Mm. And in the interview, he expressed an entire autobiography that he had made a lot of money in construction and had a Ferrari and all the rest of this stuff and told this whole story and then lapsed into, but there's nothing, nothing ever happened. Yeah. Well, if nothing ever happened, then why tell this story? What's the point? Yeah, and, well, there isn't a point to anything really, is well, there? But, 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 he, but he came off so smug. Yeah, know? I know. I think I do in these conversations as well. And you call it a certainty. And so that smugness comes across, that certainty comes across as a smugness, but really it's just a lack of doubt. There's no certainty in anything because it could be anything, like you said. This could be whatever, there's no knowing. Yes, okay. We, but, there's also, but there's also no doubt. Uh, no, I wouldn't say that at all. I don't agree. Yeah, well, the, the, I did. There's no doubt. There's no doubt, no, no. If, it's true that it's it's true. I think that we cannot know anything definitively. I'll I'll go there with you. Yeah. Although you you seem rather definite about a lot of things. Um, so that, see, there's some the jargon is difficult. Uh, you use some mm. tricky. I, I don't mean you're not trying to deceive. That's not what I mean. But mm. when I, but when I say tricky, I mean it's it's fraught. Your, your jargon is fraught. It doesn't really get anywhere. It's, it's not going anywhere. It has no intention of going anywhere. Well, it's not a question of intention, but it's a question, what I, what I say is, I see, I, let me leave your end of it aside, just tell you how I see it. Yeah. I see things, um, naturalistically. In other words, I can't know this, but I assume that I am a mammal living on the earth, that this universe exists, that there really are stars and planets. There's really a material world. There's DNA that, pr that produces various life forms and that I'm one of those life forms. Do I know that? Of course, I can't know it. I could be dreaming the whole thing. This could be the matrix for all I know. Mm. But mm. it's highly probable in, in my estimation that naturalism is truer than the way that you are seeing the world. And so I would I'll, I'll listen to you and even be influenced by some of the things you say. I think some of the things you say are quite interesting. As I read earlier, I agree with you about many things, but not on the certainty that you bring to it, not at all. I think that you could be entirely deluded and that what you were calling this message is not a truth or a non-truth. It's a point of view and you have it. You, you will deny that. You'll say there's no myself to have it. Mm. I get that. But for me, that doesn't work at all um, because psychologically, whether this is a fact of the universe or not, I don't know. But psychologically, we really do exist. We really are people psychologically. And psychologically, we really care about many things. I, I do. If you don't, mm. That's a, to me, that's a rather bloodless or, or uh, inhumane. Um, it's a denial. It's a denial mm. of, of a beating heart, uh, sexuality, having a wife, which you have a beautiful wife. I guess you care about her, or you would say there's no, it's no one to care about anything. So can you? 
respond? Yeah, yeah. It's not that caring can't arise. It's just that nobody does it. Yeah, I can go on. So, with... so, so the cloud of knowing uh -huh. is a dream, a dream of ownership of the appearance. The one that then says caring is important, that anything in that sense is important. And that importance come out, comes out of a sense of personal lack. So things become important to me because I have to find something. I have an intention to make this a wholesome, heart-filled appearance or experience for me. For me, that's just a part of a dream of a center in this midst of this experience of knowing. What's obvious, and just because I don't have a better word for that, is that there's simply this, and there's nobody in it. And that can appear as caring, it can appear also cold, it can appear as heartless, and it can appear as love, it can appear as anything. Yeah, okay, well there's, <laughs> the word dream is very, is very difficult. You, you've used it, but yes, in a sense, we're dreaming right now. I will agree well, with Well, no, that. I wouldn't say we're dreaming. I wouldn't say that. Okay. What well, would you how say? about an illusion? Is that easier for you? Illusion? Um, well, yes, because I like to use the word dream to mean what occurs when we're sleeping at night. Yeah, yeah. I, to use, to, to apply that same word to this illusion. Yeah. It's very confusing. Yeah, yeah. okay. So uh, the illusion yeah. is that there's someone having this experience. Yes, I agree with you that, that it's illusory, but that doesn't mean it's not real. Oh, for me, it's completely unreal. Okay. Like it's, like it's so unreal it's not happening. Like right now, it's not happening. The mm -hmm. only happening of that illusory experience is the claim that it's happening. That's as thin as it is. Mm -hmm. Well, suppose I get cut right across the wrist and I'm bleeding badly. Mm -hmm. Is that an illusion or am I bleeding? No, the illusion, the illusion is that it's happening to a center knowing experience. Now the brain functions and my, may or may not do something about the cut, but the illusion is the center um, owner of the appearance. That's uh, the illusion. Well, so if this occurred to you, mm -hmm. would you say it's only an illusion? You're not listening. That, what I, I mean, that, not to be crass, but I'm saying the illusion isn't the body or the cutting or the bleeding or the pain or that comes out of it. Mm -hmm. The illusion is the center experiencer that relates everything to itself, that lives in a sense of something needs to happen. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm, I'm listening as best I can. Yeah, sorry, sorry. <laughs> no, that's all right. I, you know, I understand. I, I can be difficult, Farney. Um, but because I care about these matters. Otherwise, I would, there are other things I could do with, with this day. Mm. I'm, I'm discussing this with you because I think you do have a handle on something that's unusual, radical, and well, saying you have a handle on it isn't quite right. I, I, think you, Sorry. I think you're discussing something that's worth hearing. Let's put it that Thanks. way. Mm. Yes. And so I want to engage with it. And this is my opportunity to discuss it directly with you. Mm. I should say parenthetically that, I, that you're very unpopular with certain people. And I heard from a no lot of- No kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I heard from a lot of them. And, um, you know, they imagined that Robert's going to get in there and vanquish Jim or something, but that's not my intention. Please understand. I, I'm, I yeah, wanna, yeah, I, no, I'm fine. I, but but I, that's really not my intention. I, yeah, I want, it doesn't matter. It's fine. And even if it was, it's all, it really is in order. It's, it, there's truly, and I obviously can't impart that or it's not being believed or heard. There is no intention here. There just isn't. And the funny thing is there isn't there either. 
but there might be the illusion that there is. Um, well, that's a judgment. Okay. I've heard so, that before. Okay. Well, well, from my perspective, you're constantly judging. Right. Constantly. I mean, I, I don't see you not judging. You, you bring okay. a kind of, I mean, the words that you use, this is self-evident is a mm. tremendous judgment. I don't know if you see I don't that. know that I said self-evident. I say obvious. Well, okay. Yeah. For you, self-evident might be my word for obvious. Mm. And for you, it's airtight. In other words, that's the way it is. There is no other. This mess, like when, you see, it's, it's partly jargon, Jim, I think. The jargon which you apparently inherited and not did not create, maybe that's unfortunate mm. that it unfolded that way. Maybe if you'd had the experience, see, I believe you had the experience. I've had that experience, similar experience. You don't think it's an experience, I get that, but <laughs> that's the problem with this jargon. You see, then there's really nothing to discuss. Mm. What I imagine is that you had a kind of experience of no self. Mm. And, and that was shocking. What do I make of this? And that's when you kind of wandered around in your mind and then you met Tony. And as you said it, he was discussing this in a way that made sense to you. And that kind of cleared things up. I get, that's pretty much how I understood your, your story. Well. I'm not that different from that. I had many years ago, a very amazing awakening and I had, it took me years to cope with it and kind of figure out how to deal with that as, a, as an ordinary person. And yeah. um, so it's the jargon You see that when you say this message that sounds as if there's a message like floating around in space somewhere. Yeah. But no, this is your message. It's if not. You, well, That's you, the whole point. But if you didn't speak it, it wouldn't be here. Well, I mean, in this, I mean, here, you're saying that I'm speaking it and I, I have to, I have to just go there and there's no one saying this. There's no one over there either. That, that's what now, you So this, so that's this what, isn't this isn't what, a this isn't this see, isn't a a following um, deduction from an experience that happened years ago. It is the aliveness that is that has no knower. Yeah, well, we agree there. Okay, we agree. But there's there. no that, but that isn't an individual. That's just aliveness. Yes. So no one could take no yes. one could take ownership for this message. Well, oh no, you see that? See, that's another step. That's another step. I agree with you. It's just this aliveness. That's all that we know. We do know. No, we don't know that. Well, okay. I don't know that. Okay. Nobody knows that. I agree yeah. with you. We don't know yeah. what anything is. We don't, yeah. we, we don't know what anything is. You and I agree. Yeah. Okay. So but I stop there. Well, I don't stop there. But for me, that's the end of it. Right. And then after that, there's just happening. There's well, just happening. No, you see, that's, I don't stop there. That's, I know, I know, that's where we differ. That's, that's exactly, okay, so maybe that's it, and we should take some questions? Yeah, that's all right. Okay, so I got a comment on YouTube uh, from Walter Van Ord, and I think it, uh, it's, it's on spot what, what, your, uh, what your conversation is about right now. And it says, uh, Robert seems to have a, so a certain point of view and Jim doesn't, and uh, there's the friction actually. So maybe the question out of this comment would be, would you agree that this certain point of view, which Robert seems to have, uh, is something that Jim doesn't have? If I can ask like Jim, how, how, do, you, how do you speak I about- I think that's sort of what we just came to, that that's sort of yeah. where we're sort of, where we sort of part ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, Jack Saturday asked, uh, would you say, Jim, privacy is impossible? Privacy. 
I don't even know what that means. Privacy for me, it would be like sort of an explanation of somebody having something or not having something. When I go to the toilet, I close the door. Mm -hmm. I mean, if that's what they're asking about, I don't know what they're asking about. Mm -hmm. How about you, Robert? What about privacy? Oh, it's a human need mm. in my view. Mm. That's just, we all have to have a private part of our own mind that we don't share with other people because there's something growing and developing. And if other people criticize it too quickly, the growth will be thwarted. So it's like starting with a seedling in the ground, when it starts to poke its, its little green shoot up, you have to care for it carefully and, and um, protect it. That's what privacy means to me, that, that I have a private life that I don't discuss with other people because I don't know what, where that's headed. And I, I need to find out where that's headed. So that's, that's, that's psychological privacy. See, I guess, Jim, one of, one of the places that we differ is that I see all of us psychologically, and I guess you don't. Mm, totally. You don't. There's no, no, I understand. no psychology. I understand. I understand there's a psychology, but for me, that is this appearing as a discussion about psychology. It has no value in its own. I think that um, that the need for something to happen, the whole, a lot of neurotic experiences come out of the experience of separation, which is the step after unknowing. So unknowing is all there is. And then out of that comes a position that says, I know, and I need to know, and I need to be in charge. I need to make certain things happen. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's where this whole judgment of the personal experience comes in. Mm -hmm. Well, you see, I, 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 that makes sense. And I think that, that you and Sam are very much alike in that way. You were both seekers for years. You put a tremendous amount of energy into this spiritual seeking because you perceived there's a lack and I need to somehow fill that as you have expressed this. I don't think I ever felt that way. Mm. That, there was, that there was a lack that I needed to fill. I, 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 I hear what you're saying, but I think there are some people whose psychology points in that direction, and there's other people who don't feel lack. They're just mm. here. Yeah. But my, my experience is I'm just here. I don't feel yeah. there's anything wrong with it or anything lacking. I've expressed this in many ways that we all have a perfect right to be here, like the Pacific Ocean. Any any naturally occurring um, entity, a tree or or a mountain or a robber, doesn't need to be self-justifying or and doesn't need to anything. We don't. I, I don't have an experience of lack, and I think possibly people who are spiritual seekers like you and then find something, which you say is nothing, because there's no one to find and nothing to find. I get that, I get that. I mean, I could, in a sense, I could, we could switch roles. I could, I could carry on as Jim Newman if I wanted to, but I don't want to. Not that there's anything wrong with what you're doing. I, I really, I'm not criticizing it. I don't mean it that way. I just see that with different people. And you see, you, you don't see that there are people. But I, I do, and I see that each person has a kind of destiny or a, a direction, like, like a seed. You put it in the ground. If it's an acorn, an oak will grow. If it's a, a grain of corn, then a stalk of corn will grow. And it's not the same thing. They're different. So there have to be Jim Newmans. There have to be Robert Saltzmans. There have to be... Tony Parsons, and that's just the way it is. And mm. I agree with you that how they express themselves is not a choice. I agree. I, you and I will agree on that. We're not. Nobody's 
nobody's manipulating all this to make it come out one way or another. So we get that far. But you take it to a complete non-existence. None of this. No. Well, no. I take it to an empty appearance. So it appears it's just simply empty. And I have to, you keep mentioning this, this spiritual path that I seem to have gone on. Mm -hmm. And that what I talk about now is the result of that. At the beginning of the conversation with Sam, he asked me what my story was. And I said, look, if I tell you my story, people are going to think that what I'm talking about now is a result of that. Mm -hmm. And he said, oh, no, my listeners will be intelligent enough not to make that mistake. And it is, in, it is incessant that, that, this, that the story that I told oh. is, then, is then used as a reference for what I'm talking about now. Because... No. What's being shared now has no reference to anything else. It isn't the result of no, anything. I, look, this I, moment isn't the result of any other moment. I have one other point, and yeah. that is saying that I was on a spiritual search because there was a need. So the individual, and this is, you'll call this a judgment and a certainty, but I don't know what to do about that, is need. And it's either more or less felt by people. It has more or less sort of um, expressions. But every individual, every experience of separation is seeking. There's no, there's no difference. And I just happen to be unfortunate enough to have an awakening at a young age that set me on a journey, apparently. Yeah, okay. Well, I was not saying that what happened before accounts for what it is now. I do, oh, okay, right. I, I don't believe that. And so mm -hmm. I, I don't say that. It's all of a piece. Mm -hmm. It's all, it's not... It's it's like a sausage. You take could take a slice from anywhere in that sausage, but it's all sausage. Mm -hmm. I don't think one thing causes another. I don't think causality doesn't work that way. If there if it yeah. even exists, I don't yeah, know if exactly. it exists or not. But if it does, it's not simple like that. Mm. A A causes B. No, what I meant by that was that. Everyone is different. Some people would hear this conversation and think it's absolutely nuts. Mm. Right? It is pretty nuts. Yeah. Well, okay. In, from I a, go there. Yeah. From, from a point of view, it's absurd to talk this way. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we both agree on that. Okay. Yeah. So, the, so you and I actually agree on a lot. We, I think we mm. do. Hmm. I just think that this idea of lack and need apparently drives you psychologically and it's not driving me psychologically. You will say, yes, Robert, it is because if there's any feeling of separation, that's, that's the lack. But mm -hmm. that's not my experience. Yeah. My, my, my experience is one not of lack at all. But of, mm. but of fullness in each moment. Each moment mm. for me is amazing. I think, I think the people who like what I have to say, I, to me, I think they like it because that's the feeling. I, I'm like a child in a sense. I'm amazed at this world. I'm amazed that I'm here. Yes, I don't know what any of it is, but I can't go where you go to say, well, it doesn't exist. I, I just, it does exist. What, mm -hmm. what it is, we cannot know, but we, we, I certainly can't say that none of this exists. This is the realest thing that we know, what's happening yeah. right now. I mean, I can't pretend that you don't exist. You're here. So I don't say that you don't exist. What I, what I don't do is I take a next step from we don't know. So what happens here, what's obvious, because I just don't have a better word for it, what's undeniable, it seems to me, is, as you said, we don't know. But there is apparently something happening. So I'm not saying that there's nothing appearing. I'm just saying that that's we don't know or unknowing appearing to happen. And for me, or for this, that's the end of the story. There is no need for, the, for there to be a story behind that. And that isn't for me a coldness 
or um, a, a lack of caring. It is an unconditional freedom that doesn't have the constraints of need or separation. Yeah, well, I get that. So you've come to a conclusion that for you is liberating. I mean, if you want to call it that, that's okay. Well, I'm calling it that because that's how it appears. Yeah, to you. Yeah, of course. Yeah. No, I, I, that's the only But if it happened there, it might be obvious that it isn't a position. Could be. I mean, I, I have no way of judging that. I, no, you don't. That's true. That's right. Because, right, because that's not what's happening. What, exactly. So, yeah, you see, so we agree on this. The place that the place where I think we disagree, and that's fine. It's fine to disagree. I, I'm not looking for agreement with from anybody. I'm just saying how I see things, mm. and I respect that you're saying that you're honestly describing nothing. <laughs> you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. You're honestly yeah. describing. I don't. I, you know, I don't want to lapse into your jargon because then we'll then we'll really will be nuts. We'll go off into yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I just see what I see and express what I express. I don't judge it. I don't, I'm not looking for liberation. I'm not looking for freedom. I'm not looking for anything. This just is what it is. And it, yes, how it appears to me is not definitive. It's not airtight. I have no conclusions. I have you have come to a conclusion that for you- That's what you're you, saying. That's what you're calling it. Yes, that's what I'm calling yeah. it. That's yeah. all I can do. Mm. Do you feel the same way about yourself? No, there is no conclusion to this. Well, you present what you call this message. Yeah. See, the, the, here's the crux. I think we're at the crux here. Mm -hmm. Although I know I won't be able to, um, I won't be able to show this to you any more than you apparently feel you can't show me this message. Mm -hmm. you, you may feel Robert's not getting it. He can't, he can't grok it. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's what you felt about Sam. I think in Sam's case, that was correct. I think in my case, it might not be, but- That's what Sam would say, <laughs> sorry. Well, yeah. No, no, you're right, you're right. Yeah. That's yeah. what I'm pointing to here. I'm mm -hmm. pointing to the fact that all of our experience is personal experience. You may find jargon that, that abstracts it into something else so that it's not personal experience. But I don't think there's any experience that's not personal because there's always an experiencer contained. It, it is not a separate experiencer from the, but the, the experience is an experience. It, it, there's an experiencer in the experience. The experience, mm -hmm. the experiencing, and the experiencer are all one gesture, let's say, one mm -hmm. occurrence or one happening. And we can't tease that apart and, and critique it. I agree with you there. It just is what it is. And we don't know what it is. But that doesn't mean that it's non existent. To say that you don't know what something is does not mean that it doesn't exist. But I've said already in this conversation that I'm not saying things don't exist. What are you saying? That it's unknowing that appears. And you can, we can discuss whether appearance is an existence or an experience or whatever. But there's obviously something, there's obviously an appearance, but it's not real. It's not unreal either. It is, as you said, unknowing. Okay. So I'm not denying there's something apparently happening, as you seem to think I am. That's not what's being suggested. What I am suggesting, which is different from where you're coming from, is nobody's in it. Okay. I th there's no experiencer mm -hmm. of what you're calling existence. Yeah, well, see, I don't know if you know this, if you've noticed this in your own process. I know you don't have a process, but if you if if you <laughs> if you'll bear with me, what I hear you doing is you'll use the word I sometimes, and then you'll lapse into passive voice yeah. in the next sentence, 
Yeah, I think Advaita talk is just too is too taxing. I think it's fairly simple to get the idea of what's being suggested here. And uh, I don't always have to, but sometimes it's obvious that it makes more of a point to not say I or not say Jim or speak of Jim in a third person. It happens just naturally. Nobody's intentionally doing that, but it seems to make more of a point because there isn't actually an I, what, what but there you, isn't an I anywhere. What, what do you mean by Advaita talk? I didn't get that. Advaita talk, that I would have to say things like, so all there is is what's happening for no one, that whole sort of trying to circumvent the use of I the whole time or the use of Jim. It just doesn't seem, it just doesn't seem needed for me. The, 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 the sort of the, what's being presented seems available without that sort of circumventing the expression of I. Thank but God. it's obvious here that the I doesn't refer to anything. Um, yeah, see that, that's where we, that's really where we part company because when I use the word I, it does refer to something. I it's, know. It's just that I don't know what that something is. Exactly. That's right. And that is very different. Okay. Well, so I think we have established that in my mind, I'm not trying to paint you with this brush, but as I experience what we've established, see, this gets very tricky, but my experience of it is that we agree to a certain point about unknowing and the cloud of knowing. I'm, I'm with you there. That the cloud of knowing is actually what stops us from seeing clearly. Mm, if, if okay. we, to the extent that we know that we don't know, that's when our eyes begin to open wide. So mm. I know maybe you think there's no one with eyes and all of that. That's another point. But our experience is not that different our actual experience of the world. I think it's radically different, actually. I mean, I don't, I don't mean to be con a contrarian, no, but, when there's an, when, but when there's an eye there that doesn't know what it is, yes. that is radically different to there being no eye. Okay, I think that's a fair point. So there's, the, then the, that's well said, that actually penetrated. So that is the difference. Yeah, totally. It, that's the step after unknowing, becoming something valuable for you and it just nothing else coming out of this. The whole appearance is just simply unknowing appearing as a conversation with Robert Saltzman, which is very interesting. Well, so yes, so to me, this, the apparent situation of having been born into a world of other living beings is extremely valuable and worthwhile and worth cultivating, worth dealing with, worth thinking about, worth philosophizing about, although we will never conclude anything about that, although we will never conclude, never, because what we, we agree that there's, un, we don't know what anything is after all, nothing. We agree there, right? We don't know what anything is. Mm -mm. Agree? Oh yeah. Okay. So- And that's it, this. Uh, yeah, but you, you see, there's a self-assurance there that from my perspective is a, den is a denial. Yeah, I hear that. I hear that's what you think, yeah. Yeah, that's what I think. I think that yeah. you're in denial of something. Yeah. yeah. And that ha that having having come upon this this message as you call it, mm. that solved everything for you. And so yeah. so once that's solved, then all of the rest of life that other people experience for you is non-existent or unimportant. Doesn't so that's what you think I'm saying. I do, yes. Yeah. That's what I think you're saying. I think what you're saying, I think what you're saying is at a certain point, something changed for you. 
I think that's fair to say because you. And I wouldn't say those words. And you call it you call it just sort of um, what do you call it jargon? But really, I think it's a little bit of an unwillingness to hear that the jargon is pointing to something beyond just words, and that certain words are better at describing certain things than other ones. And so, when you say that something happened here which brought about this revelation or whatever this message is, then I think that that's just simply not what happened. That would be the same thing as saying that the spiritual search led to what's being shared. That didn't happen. As you said, and it's funny, you have a lot of the, the we agree on certain things, but you draw lines around them where you know what they are. And, and there's different ideas that run together, very much like Sam Harris, somebody wrote to me and said at the beginning of every meditation, he says, there's no one and there's no one to make a choice. Now you've got to decide to be, to be mindful for the next 25 minutes. It's like, he says these things, but he doesn't believe them in the end because nothing happened to bring this moment about, just like you said before, there's no real cause and effect. Yeah, I, I'm not, well, it, the words are very difficult on this point. I, I, I was not saying that something happened to bring this about. That's, uh, it, it, but I understand that it could sound that way because it's very hard to express this particular point. Um, I think that what, what you feel now about all of this, what you perceive works for you and because it and it works very well, and because it does, for you it's airtight. It's so it's obvious. But what I see is, you 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 come from a position of that no that I am, that doesn't know what it is, and yes. that's the only sense it can make of what's being shared here. Is that so? Because I am a position of I am then when somebody else says these things to me, then this is what obviously functions for them because that's what I've done in my own life. And what I'm talking about, like I said with Sam, is radically different. Yeah, well, I see that it's radically different. I'm not denying that. Mm. But I don't think it makes you a non-person. No. That's okay, let's see, let's see if, if our, our questions here in the Zoom can steer the conversation <laughs> a little bit forward because uh, right now we have already two people with their hand, uh, three people already with their hands up for a long time. So first would be Göran Karlberg. Could you unmute yourself and whoever asks a question, please turn on your video if that's possible. Thank you, Michael and Marcus. And thank you for doing this. And... Uh, Nice to meet you, Robert and Jim. And um, hello. The question, the question I have is, is it's like <clears throat> for several years I've been on the spiritual path and and uh, started re reading Robert's books a few years ago. Uh, I had a belief in a higher power earlier, but now I would say I'm an agnostic. And uh, through the years, it's like been I am uh, I I don't know is I don't know. I don't know like anything more than this happening right now, but I also know that I am a person that in, in a way that have different needs. You know, I, I want to take care of my kids. I have a girlfriend and, and uh, <clears throat> so it's some way I have a person operating in the world. And, and also I see like how I could, um, coming see you Jim is is like I visited Robert's page and I saw the the interview with Sam and I listened to that talk and uh, I liked it and and I I see some big similarities between between you two and um, <clears throat> so the question is I understand I have a, a sense of yeah there's not the person and it, it's somehow getting clearer to me that, that there is no Yoran inside of me that operating this body. So, so that is starting somehow to reveal. But, uh, but to say that, that 
everything that happens hasn't led to this moment, mm. it seems a bit strange, but I understand that this moment is self-existent without everything I have done earlier. I understand that, but it seems like I've done something to, to end up in this meeting. Do you understand how I mean? Mm. Can I interrupt? You... Pardon? Can I interrupt? Yeah, please. Um, uh, my name is Steve. Um, ah, okay. Now it's for someone else. I thought it was Jim or Robert. <laughs> okay. Uh, my story. Okay. I met... Um, oh, Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. This guy, Koran, just... Should, I think Jim or Robert quite should... A long, uh, quite a long, a long yeah. introduction to his question. So maybe, Robert, you want to take it first? Should we both answer it just in different ways? Or? Well, go ahead. Can I answer it? Go ahead. Go ahead, Jim. Yeah. Ah. Steve, please, uh, we take one uh, after another. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, I mean, Robert and I both said that, well, he suggested it was like a sausage and you just cut it up. There's no real cause and effect. So your experience will be that this happening is the beginning of everything. So if you have a memory, it's going to be this appearing as that. Mm. So there's no way to point out a real past. Can I talk about cause and effect? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. I'll talk I mean, about you it can at any time, but I think this is sort of set up a little bit differently. How about okay. if how about if Robert and I answer the question and then you jump okay, in okay. afterwards and explain yes. your point of view? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess that's my answer about cause and effect and you having you showing up here. I mean something I would add as far as what comes out of this is that the experience that you did something is part of the illusory experience that there was a real past that leads to a real future. And that's just part of the, I think, illusion of personal. So Jim, you mean that because everything that is, is just right now? No, that's well, the... see, see, there isn't a now. <clears throat> when there's, now would suggest that there's some other time that's different than what is. So you could be now or you could not be now. What, what, what's being pointed to here is there is only what is, no matter okay. what it appears as. So there is mm. absolutely nothing to hold on to. It's just there's, is. There's just, well, is notness. It is mm. and isn't because it's as we've agreed on, it's unknowing, mm. appearing. Mm. So that'd be my answer. Yeah, thanks. Answer. Yeah. <laughs> Can I go back to um, cause and effect? No, we have I, also Robert, please. If, if Robert, if you could mention anything about it. Yeah, sure. If you, if you got my long question, it was a, a too long introduction. I'm sorry for that one. No, that, you, you're Goran, right? Are you, are you yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Hi, it's nice to see you. Yeah, same, Robert. Um, What my experience is like this. I don't know if anything leads to anything because I don't know what anything is. I find myself here. There is a sense of self that I experience, but I don't know to what that refers. Um, it could be an entirely illusory, or there may really be selves. I don't think anyone is standing outside of his or her own experience to be able to make that distinction. That's, that's my way of understanding life, <laughs> but I'm not, it doesn't explain anything. It's, it's just the way I, I feel. I, I wake up in the morning. I don't try to be, I just am. Mm. There's a sense of self. It, it could be an illusion. I don't know if it's an illusion or it isn't, but since it's there, I have to deal with it. Just like I would have to deal with a bloody wound. I'd go to the emergency room or whatever. 
this isn't emergent in that way. But when I wake up in the morning, I've been dreaming. I've, there's, there's been all kinds of imagery, uh, dogs running up the hillside, whatever, on fire. <laughs> then that stops and the, and the actual material world, apparent material world is there. I didn't make it, I didn't put it there, I didn't create it as far as I know, but I have to deal with it. And I just get into dealing with it while knowing that my dealing with it's not going to lead anywhere, it's just what, what must occur, the ball is rolling. And, and so I've never been on a spiritual search, never. Not, a, not for a moment in my life was I looking for some solution to being alive. I'm just completely involved in, in being alive, completely. I take it for granted. I, I, I don't question it. I, I don't know if that makes it clear. I don't think there's anything, any, you say you're on a spiritual path. There is no path from here to here. This is it. At some point, one realizes there's no alternative. This is it. Whatever I feel and think is what I feel and think. I'm not producing that and I can't choose to feel and think otherwise. This just is what it is. I think where Jim and I differ is he's saying it, it isn't really. There's no, the sense of self he is sure is an illusion. I'm not sure of that at all. I just don't know what it is or to what it refers. And I think that's the difference between us, if I have that correct. I don't know if that answers your question, Goran. Yeah, because I, I don't think, I'm not on a spiritual quest anymore because it ended by reading your books. So I, I'm, I'm quite content with who, whom I am now, but, but it seems like they're an essence of Yaran because it seems in retrospective, uh, it seems like I behave like a, a person sometimes. And I guess you do the same. Maybe both of you like special mm. foods or love someone or, mm. but, and, and that is reoccurring. Mm. But, uh, yeah. So it, do you understand what, is there an essence? I, I understand that, yeah, I guess there is no specific person named Yaran who, has, mm. who is like operating in the world, but there is an essence of Yara. Is there an I would essence? call it a character. Yeah, yeah, a character, yeah, yeah. But that isn't the person, it's like a role or how do you say, what do you say, Jim? Well, you, you know, if we're gonna discuss, so explanations, the explanation would be conditioning and experience together sort of creates a sort of a character. Mm. or your preferences for certain things or the way you live your life or what seems to happen or how you like to decorate. Those are parts of your, of your character. Mm. Uh, Jim, I'd like to ask you to, to elucidate that a bit further or carry that out a little further. What do you mean by character? What, what is that? Well, like I just said, you know, the DNA of the body and the conditioning over time and um, preferences, beliefs, whatever, whatever is still, whatever lingers in there um, as, as, but the, I think where, we'll, where we would differ is for, for me, me, that's not happening to anyone. That's just truly an explanation. So it's just a story. It has no relevance to anything. Okay. And there we would differ because for you, everything has relevance, it seems. Well, matters. I would agree that it's just a story. Everything, mm -hmm. in a sense, is just a story. Everything is just a story in a certain sense. I mean, if you don't know the words and the, and the, the poetry, you can't sing the song. I mean, we, we mm -hmm. all have. But some stories are very much better than others, is how mm -hmm. I understand this. Mm -hmm. So a story that's about love and caring for me is far superior to a story, a story about hate and destruction. It just is. Why I feel that way, I don't know. And who feels that way, I cannot put 
a finger on that either. So you and I agree to a certain extent, but, but those feelings are there. You call it character, that's a character. Robert, yeah. the, Rob, the Robert character thinks he has such feelings, but the character is only an illusion. Yeah, that I think that- I wouldn't call the character an illusion. The central knower to the experience is the illusion. Oh, I, I believe that. I, so oh, okay. you, you and I agree on that. There is no central. Yeah. There is no central knower. There just mm. is what is. There, the yeah. feeling, okay. So see, we we really agree. That's an essential point. It may not be your your message. <laughs> the, oh, message. I think that is that is the only thing that actually is being said. There are certain consequences that might not be readily apparent that there is no center experiencer to what's happening. Oh, I think, I, I, I think we're just getting somewhere now. This is very interesting. I'm really happy to hear you say that because I do like a lot of the things you say. And if, if you really mean what you're saying now, of course, there's no one to really mean it. There's no, I get that. There's no central nor. But if you, if we concur that there's no myself doing any of this, that just doesn't exist at all. There's not a, a little homunculus in somewhere inside my brain directing the show here. If we agree on that, I think that's 99% of it. And yeah. whatever, whatever consequences you may draw from that, that mm. understanding, and not even an understanding, but you know what I mean. Whatever yeah. consequences or, or uh, whatever devolves from that, that under that understanding is really unimportant mm. because no one can choose that anyway. Totally. Well, so you and I really do agree very, I think, and it, I don't think, I don't really see any disagreement. I mm. think I cracked the code here. Oh. <laughs> I was calling jargon. See what I was calling jargon. I didn't mean to be insulting, but that might be a, a little bit insulting, I, but I didn't mean it that way. I just meant it's a patois. It's different from normal speech or ordinary mm. talk. Mm. Um, yeah, I, 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 and the way I understand it is to go back to what you were saying. Your character sees it this way, and my character sees it this way, and the mm. characters are not real. Mm necessarily they might be but we have no way of judging that we don't know what that is so we agree i don't i don't actually <laughs> not what you sorry i don't mean to be difficult but the way you just said it no i wouldn't agree that the characters have different perspective the character is is a description of of the body plus conditioning it has nothing to do with a perspective or a central knower yeah, okay. so this body this body prefers. Okay, so we don't we don't agree because don't, what Gorin was calling what Gorin was calling the essence mm. might or might not might or might not exist, and I have no way of judging that. You you mm. have a way apparently of saying that doesn't exist. Well, I'm, I'm making a differentiation between the experience of the owner, the central knower, mm -hmm. and a character. Because there's obviously a, a, a function of the body with the conditioning and the DNA and whatever else you, you, you know, whatever else, that, that that functioning happens and it has different expressions, obviously, between Robert and Jim and, and Goran. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but that that is simply unknowing appearing, unknowing appearing as that. It has no value in mm -hmm. that sense. Yeah, well, it might be enjoyed or not enjoyed, but it has no value. Right, that's very similar to Buddhism, you know. Oh, okay. I've it's, heard that. Yes, it's very similar. It's it's um, no, there's no there's no essence to anything. Yeah. Okay. Totally, it's empty. Right. Okay, so that's I get that. Hmm. I I just don't know if there is an essence or not. I have no way of standing outside of this experience and judging anything about it. I just well, it's a revelation. It, it just falls away. And so it's the same, it's the same as, as this could easily say, this is in Vienna. You could call that a conviction that just seems to be obvious that this is in Vienna. 
So, and it's the same with that central experience knowing the I am that literally falls away as a knowing. And it's not, it's not that it actually falls away. One of the, one of the very interesting things about it is that it, 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 the falling away is actually the recognition that it never really happened. There never was a central knower. There never is one. That's why I can say there isn't one there either. Sounds okay. like a conviction I know, but what am I going to well, do? No, I understand that it, that's a point that really can't be expressed in language. Mm. I, I, mm. And I understand that what I was calling jargon is your way of trying to do your best to express the inexpressible. Yeah. I, yeah. I, yeah. I'll, I'll, give, I'll give you that. I'm not, yeah. I'm, I don't mean to critique your language any, any further. I think that we're, yeah. both, we're both doing our best. It's not, yeah. these are hard things to discuss. Mm. Um, well, we pretty much agree, although it seems more to me that we agree than it does to you. I get that. And, <laughs> okay, uh, thank you for, for agreeing and not agreeing at the same time. Um, I, I want to ask Steve Holloway, maybe you wanted to say something very urgent about uh, cause and effect. Oh, yes. Um, uh, where to start? Um, Oh, well, uh, we, we talk about cause and effect. You know, this thing causes... Okay, maybe you can uh, switch on the video if it's possible. Uh, how do I do that? Mm -mm. Is that okay? Yeah. Now okay. I see the top of your head. Oh, right. Let me move the, uh, my little camera around. Oh, perfect. Hello. Okay. Hey, Steve. <laughs> Hi. Um, Okay, my name's Steve. Um, I live in uh, London and uh, I met Douglas Harding in oh, 1970. And, uh, well, he, he showed me I had no head. And from that, you know, things went on and on and on. And then we get to cause and effect. So we say this happens that happens, which makes that happen, which makes that happen. But we can only say that after it has happened. You can't say before this is what is going to happen using cause and effect. You can only say cause and effect made this happen after it has happened. How's that? That one doesn't Logical? Work. That one oh, doesn't sorry, work. Robert. Go ahead, Jim. No, no, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, no, I don't agree with that point of view at all. Um, you can you can see a, a sequence of events historically, but I don't think you can say that one caused another because we actually have no idea what time is. We don't really know if there's a before or an after. We only know that as humans, we experience time, but that does not mean for, oh, start my video, yes. Okay. Oh, we see you okay. now. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, we don't, we experience time and we also experience a history. I was once a baby, I've seen the photographs, then I was this six year old and I can recognize my face in that, in those photographs. And now I'm 75 year old guy and I have a whole personal history. I can look back on that and see a sequence of events and imagine that there's causality to all of that, but that's just my imagination. I don't know that one thing causes another. And actually the, the physicists and cosmologists don't know that either. This is a, this, so this is a human experience and a, a mammal and a mammalian experience because other, other mammals experience time also we have ways of knowing that that's that's a, a human experience or an animal experience that time flows and that there's a sequence of before and an after but really this might all be happening at once it could be that like ants crawling on a picnic table they may think that the sausage sausage and then they go further produces a, a, a jar of mustard that caught the sausage caused the jar of mustard to be there, but that's only because they have a limited view. If someone took that ant and raised it above the 
picnic table and it could look down and see all of it, there wouldn't be any time. It would all just be there. And that may be very much the reality of the universe and not our particular uh, body-based experience at all. I don't know. Yes, I, 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 I agree. Um, yeah, we... we uh, oh. uh, let's say uh, scientists, yeah, they like the idea of cause and effect because it kind of makes sense to them. It makes sense. You know, there's, um, I don't know, uh, gravity causes the moon to go around the earth. You know, that's a cause and effect. We know about gravity. We know about the moon. Waiting, so we can work out where the moon let, is. Let, let me stop you there, Steve. That's, yeah. that, that's very that's a very naive view of what science knows. Right. So I don't think, I don't think a, a really educated scientist would say that gravity causes the moon to go around the earth. Gravity is just a description of the situation, not a cause of anything. Right, yeah, I agree. Okay, well, you <laughs> see, then, then, we're, then we're on point here. Okay. There is no causality, there's description. And we don't yes. know. Yes. Okay. I'll, let me give Jim a chance to respond. I, I have a lot less to say about all that. It sounds like a very logical deduction. Okay. Um, scientists. Let's say scientists um, or people who think um, about the world, the, the universe as a as a physical system. They have they use cause and effect to say what is going to happen. Yeah, but they're wrong. There is only now, there is only what has happened. And you can only say this caused that after it has happened. You can't say it before something's happened. Yeah. You mean you can't make predictions? Yes, that's what I mean. Yeah. But actually, if you, if the, the thing that stops predictions from being possible is that um, there's no way to know all the factors. If we actually could know all the factors, like on a billiard table, there's total prediction on a billiard table. If you hit the, the cue ball with a certain spin and a certain speed and it strikes the object ball, at a certain angle, it can be predicted every time where that ball will go, either in the pocket or not. And there's no deviation there. But the point is that we cannot know that about the physical universe. And what you're, the people you're calling scientists have known that for a long time. They call it quantum uncertainty. You cannot know the position and velocity of everything all at once, is, is the way that's expressed often in science. Yes, and I agree. I think I think what we I think that what happens among spiritual people is they don't really understand science and they they demonize what they call materialism. Whereas if you really understand what many of the best scientists are saying, it's um, it really trumps most spirituality in in its in its. Uh, its viewpoint is very much wider than, than, than the certainties of spirituality. Such and such doesn't really exist, or there's one truth, or whatever. That's, that's silly. And actually, well, when, we, when we regard the universe, we can't get any grip on it. And, that, and the best scientists don't try to get a grip on it. They're, they're just trying to understand it, but they, not, to, not to imagine that they're going to solve one equation and that will explain everything. It won't. No, no. But um, oh, when it comes down to it, um, the whole universe is is energy. Okay, it's it's light or it's oh, particles which are in fact waves, which is just changes in energy. That's the whole thing is made up of. If you like, at the quantum level, yeah, there is nothing. There is nothing at all. But we see stuff. Um, we know things are going to happen. Um, 
If you look into oh, what's been found out about the ninth planet, okay, you can look that up. What you'll find is there is a large object somewhere out beyond the solar system. It's a big thing, uh, but they don't know what it is. They don't know where it's going. Um, you know, it may be aliens come to visit. It may be a big asteroid that's going to hit the Earth in, you know, 10 years' time. Uh, it's going to cause a, what do they call it, an extinction-level event, yeah, an eerie, um, which will, you know, wipe out most of the life on our planet. But what they're doing is looking and observing and seeing what is happening. And that, you know, is what is happening now. But there is only now, there's only here. For me, I am the centre of the universe. You know? <laughs> if, I, if I look around me, you know, there is the world all the way around. And every time I look, there it is all around. And I listen, yeah, yeah there are sounds. Oh, I smell that, I smell the taste, whatever it is. And that just happens. That is what is happening. That's, you know, life, you know. So that is what, yeah, that's the way it is. It just happens. I'm done. I have nothing more to say. <laughs> very good. So thanks very much for your question. And uh, we think we'll give the floor to Girish Chavan. Can you unmute yourself? Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. <laughs> the dual talks, uh, I attended uh, two or three. Yeah, nothing. F uh, FM. <laughs> uh, nice spiritual people. And uh, once, Robert, uh, you look shiny. Spiritual shiny. Very nice. Uh, and... Uh, I heard that uh, two, uh, two or three weeks uh, from the nothingness or some uh, the gym uh, said about my English is not that good, so please understand. Uh, I experienced that when you say nothing, totally we are ignoring. But nothingness can't explain itself to life. We have to come out for experience. I, I observed that ki, uh, nothingness can't explain itself. For that, we need I or express. They are both, both are true. Jim's also true or Robert also true. I, I think. Uh, my experience. What do you think? I don't know. It's my experience. One is alive and another is dead. Both, both are true. Just perfection, our uh, perception is different. It's all right with me. You also true and Robert also true. Well, I have nothing to add. Both are true. I have, I have nothing, nothing to say. Thank you. Thank you. There is nothing to say also. <laughs> Just experience now. <laughs> life. We are alive. We are alive. Thanks very much, Kirish. Thank uh, you. Let's hand over the floor to Ilango. Can you turn on your video and your microphone? Ilango, are you there? Yeah, I am there. Okay, you got I, have to turn on my video. I have to turn on my video, right? Yeah, turn it on if you not make it. Okay, I'm new to this. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah, you're able to see me. Yes. Yeah, my question is to uh, Jim. And I just say a hi to Robert because the first time I'm seeing him uh, online. Hello, oh, yeah. Robert. Hello. hello. Hello, Bob. And question is to Jim. Uh, Jim, um, you, 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 you're one of the you know, famous uh, non-dual speakers internationally. The first time I'm speaking to you, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Uh, uh, when I speak to you, I think I'm speaking to a lot of speakers like you who uh, bring this message of Tony Parson post-1995. 
and my question to you is who are you nothing what speaking there is to no, me there is there. no you That's nothing nothing but the thing that might not be obvious is nobody's asking either there's no, no, just no 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 that is yeah yeah i understand i understand that jim but uh, you can't you know like you can't think for me i accept what you say that nobody is speaking but from my perspective as a speaker i'm not an enlightened person i'm a speaker so from my perspective there is somebody speaking here because i yeah. have an voter id i have an you know election card i have an identity card from for my nation passport etc etc and i think you to have it and what i uh, commonly ask the speakers is that you know a very simple childish question how do you go back home you don't go back to the next home you go back to your home you identify you have a memory base you identify you are living in 12 lexington avenue etc 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 and you go back but you keep denying that there is no you inside that i find as a speaker who is as a seeker who is not enlightened a bit hard to accept so how do you explain that to a seeker like me i i can't you obviously are convinced that something else is happening but that's all right i can't convince you of anything i'm not here to convince you of anything all i can do is suggest that there isn't anyone there is no one in there nobody speaking and your your card your identity card and your home and all of that aren't evidence that there is anyone but there is somebody inside you know who who remembers no, there a lot of no memory happens but nobody there's not there's no need for anybody to be in there for it to happen it actually happens without anyone but it happens when there's that experience of separation it happens within the cloud of knowing or the cloud of ownership and so then you rightly say what you say isn't in my experience and you're absolutely correct it's not in your experience and it never will be so what would be and your so it makes no sense it's it's unbelievable until it's undeniable yeah, it's let, let, let me come along go let me just put my oar in the water here for a moment yeah um because i agree with what jim is saying there doesn't have to be a myself here for all of this to be happening it could be that what's happening all comes together and produces a sense of self out of just spare parts that a sense of self is is a kind of um confection that we that is made out of various experiences the experience of a body the experience of perceptions thoughts and feelings and consciousness of all that may then create a, a fictional self that's at the center of all of that when really all of this is just going on and happening without any self um doing it or making it or responsible for it i don't i don't know if that's what jim is saying or not but that's how yeah, i see it yeah i understand so no, but are you saying that there is a self or you're saying there is no self I'm saying no one is in from my point of view no one is in a position to know that and and never has been so that all the spiritual um chit chat about this is just chit chat it doesn't necessarily refer to anything real so if i get you right you are neither supporting a self neither a non self there's neither a self nor a non self those are just concepts what 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 exists just exists what whatever regardless of what anybody thinks about it this yeah, is all, i get that this is all just here including yeah, the sense of self if there's a sense of self that's part of what's here if there's no sense of self which is what jim is saying about himself then that's the way the cookie crumbles no one's doing it no okay. one's making it yeah thank you <clears throat> my question back to jim um now you are enlightened am i right no. when you when you were young you got enlightened right no was there a method for your enlightenment so that you i didn't i didn't hear me i said no <laughs> no no I, no no i heard you i heard you speaking to bob about half an hour back that you got enlightened very young enlightened. unfortunately that was the word you used well nobody's enlightened enlightenment as far as i am concerned is a state and um, this okay. isn't in a state there's something that stopped happening called i am 
and that stopping happening is revealed in the end of it that never really happened. And that is the experience that what's happening is real. It's just, it's just an illusion. Yeah, but something happened in your life where there was an I am and then an I am collapsed. Am I right? That, that's, that's, that would be logical. That's not what happened. There seemed to be a dream of I am that made this seem to be part of a story. Okay, I That follow dream your... or illusion of I am stopped happening, revealing this was never, this is not a story. It's simply... I understand that. Okay, but I'm not... Yeah, I understand that. I'll follow your dictionary. Um, so when this I am, which was illogical, I won't use the word jargon, I'll use the word dictionary. So yeah. Jim's dictionary where the I am collapsed, illogically or logically, whatever. Before okay. that, before that in the story, in the La La Land there story... There is no before Jim, that. that was this is this is before that. Okay, was there a method? No, this is before that. If this is everything, what's the method to this? It sounds very similar to what Robert, Robert would say. No, you say there was an I am and then the I am was not there. No, I said there was an I am. And when it fell away, it was revealed that it never happened. And what's yeah, revealed but... is there's only there's only this. Yeah, but I'll just, you know, copy paste your own words. I know, I but am, you're going to try. You're trying to put. You're trying to put this into a story. The story of this, meaning this is revealed to someone, only re, is real in the dream or the illusion of the individual. Okay. This, okay. I'll go back so, to your own. So the dream of the individual, when it stopped happening, what's revealed is it never happened. It didn't lead to this. There's nothing that leads to this. Okay, in the dream of or in the illusion of Jim, when the I am yeah. collapsed, was there a method? Yeah. Was there a well, method as a seeker? Part of the experience of the individual, what you're saying is, what can you do to Correct. find what is? Correct. And that is exactly where the freedom of what is hides in the experience that something needs to happen for it to be free already. That's an illusion. Nothing has to happen. You were once like us seekers seeking, right? That that's a, that was an illusion. But it, that that happened on a calendar time. You can go back to you know two thousand or two thousand. But that's this appearing as a calendar time. But you do agree this meeting has been now for two hours. Do you accept that or not on on your cell no, phone? No, I don't because this the two hours that you're talking about is this appearing as two hours. Show me the last hour. It no you matter what you show me. No matter what you yeah. show me, it's going to be this. Yeah, but you can see it on your computer clock, right? But that's this appearing as a computer clock saying we've been talking for two hours. Okay. If you don't look at the computer clock, if you go out and see the sun, you can see the sun moving from the east to the west. What is that? Yeah, but, yeah, but, but that would still be this appearing as the sun. But then uh, uh, non-dual, uh, the FM... Uh, the, the, the conference, you know, they fixed up a time about a week ago there and they said, and we all came together in this. How do you say it is not there? Though it is happening uh, in the now, it happened in the well, past. There's no, yeah. <laughs> if you have a now, you have the past. The, I'm not suggesting there's a now that's separate than the past. The suggestion no. is there's only what seems to be. And now you're telling me what you remember about a time set for the FM, which is what is appearing as you telling me about a time that FM nothing was was um, was set for this meeting. No, I, I agree to, to you. I agree that the present is the actual reality. But as you speak and I speak across the internet, at the speed of light, something is happening. There is a transmission. Ah, uh, yeah, no, there isn't. Your image, my image, though it is though it is landing in the present, I do agree. There is a transmission it's, of electromagnetic impulses. It's not landing in the present. There is only present, although I wouldn't use that word. So you advise no methods for the seekers who follow you. What method could there be to find what's already? See, that is that is one which has been happening after Tony Parson in 1995. But there have been a lot of teachers like Osho or Ramana Maharishi, you know, Papaji, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, who had methods, Vedic methods, thousands and thousands of years in India. There are yeah. methods people have advised. You advise no method. I mean, if I am to be clear, That's, am I right? Absolutely. Because there's no one to tell. See, what you, you're coming from a position that there's a difference between you and me. There isn't. There is no difference. There is nothing to get. 
The only difference is the claim that something needs to happen for us to be the same. And the response is, we're already the same. See, you have a different body. Forget the mind. I have a different body. We are continents across. How do you say we are the same? Well, but it's just what is, appearing as continents across. No, what is, I agree, but bodies are different. Yeah, difference appearing as what is. So there is no teaching. So what is the point in seekers following speakers? There's um, no point to anything, really. The only point is for the individual f feeling like it has to find meaning and purpose. There's no need for this to become anything. It's already unconditionally free. Anarchy. No, the reason why a seeker looks for enlightenment is there is an end of suffering. You would agree on that? Yes, that's right. That's right. But what this we are is seeking. the end of suffering. No, we are not seeking you know, a heavenly place with angels singing, trumpets blaring. No, no, no. We are not looking at that. We are just looking at a simple stopping of human suffering. And that yes. we see through teachers and, and gurus. And you think that's going to come through a new, another experience. You not think that if you that know that. enough, or you experience enough, or if I tell you what to do, that that will lead to the end of suffering. And the suggestion is, the end of suffering is this already. Suffering is the claim that something needs to happen. But Jim, there have been thousands of followers for you, racks of followers, millions, uh, who have been following and have not got enlightened. And there have been others who have uh, followed a certain method and who have got enlightened. So it's a very tricky situation seekers are in. Should we follow a method or we should not follow a method? I know. It's, it, it's, it's fraught with doubt, the experience of the seeker. So I have, I have a suggestion. Why not all the ND speakers form an international association like, you see, I am a doctor. We have an association for hypertension, diabetes. There is an international yeah. association. You get together and yeah. you form a consensus statement for the year 2021 and update it every year. Yeah. Because what you, you like, what should we put in the statement? <laughs> Pardon? What do you want in the statement? What should the see, statement say? I'll tell, you, I'll tell you. See, there are two groups of speakers. One say there is a method. Others say there is no yeah. method. That's and right. even among speakers who say there is no method, you still say there is a lot of doubt in the dictionary or the words that you use, which lands seekers into a lot of doubt. Yeah. So we keep on yeah. hearing the same thing for 25 years after Tony parts, there is nothing, there is nothing. But then you see speakers, <laughs> you know, they, they travel across the globe, they go to India, they go to China, Japan, they go to different European countries, attend everything. Yeah. But the message yeah. is nothing. The, what are yeah. they gaining from this? Nothing. There's nothing to gain. How about um, I tell you about my story? Steve's going to give you an answer. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, I'd like, I'd want, before you do, I'd like to interject here, please. Um, is my video on? Everyone seeing yeah, me? Yeah, see you. Um, I, I think um, that you missed something, Yolongo, that, that Jim said. You just talked over it. And it seemed to me that if you really heard that, uh, the question would be solved, at least as far as it can be in words. What he said is that suffering is a claim that something needs to happen. Now, I think at that point, if you'd heard it, you would look self-reflexively at the uh, e egocentric predicament that you're in of feeling like a separate self that needs to something to happen in order to stop your suffering. That that's what's being pointed. That is, out. Yeah, that's, but that is what every that is what every human being wants. But but no, not every human being wants that. And I, that's what I mean by the egocentric, the, the egocentric predicament. You're in that predicament. Not everyone. Uh, it's is. not it just wait, wait, let me finish. It just seems to you that everyone is in that predicament because that is the predicament that you that you take your own perceptions and project that out onto the world as if that's all that could be. That's why you don't hear what Jim is saying. You just missed it. Talk right over it. You asked him, if you're such a great spiritual teacher, man, how about throwing me a few pearls? And he really got to it, but you didn't, that, you, you got what you asked for, but you didn't appreciate it. You didn't even hear it. 
what he said is, I'm going to repeat it because I agree with it. Suffering is a claim that something needs to happen. And when we see that nothing is really happening except this being. Is this Steve means, speaking to me? I'm not able to. Is this Steve speaking to me? No, it's I'm, Robert. I'm, I'm, this is Robert. Robert, Robert. Robert. okay, okay. Robert. I'm, Ilongo, okay. What I'm, Ilongo, yeah. I, know, I know that you follow my writings and you've seen my point of view. Yeah, so correct. I'm not expressing that now. What I'm expressing is from my point of view, you asked for something, but when it was given, when, when it was given to you, you turned your hearing off and just no 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 Robert, that is your interpretation of what I said. I, I'll repeat what so, I said. Wait, stop. Yes, it's my fucking interpretation. That's the point. And so is yours. No, no, no. I'm speaking to Jim. You're coming in between and interpreting what I am telling. Oh. I would like to say to Jim again that I understand what he says. But uh, because you have come in, Robert, I will tell you too. Generally, uh, every human being in life, when they have pain, they want a solution. I agree I with Robert. Who's that? Jim. Yeah. Jim, what I was trying to tell along with Robert. I know, what but he I said agree is, with Robert. That's okay. okay. But then you don't have anything to say now. I mean, if you're willing to listen, I'm willing to say. Okay. No, I just, have to say. just as long... Just as long as you understand that that I understood very clearly what Robert said. Very oh, clear. He's very okay. clear in this uh, yeah. elucidation of what he said. He said I didn't understand. I didn't nested over it. No, I I understand what Jim has said. That you know mm. suffering happens, and he used the word egocentric. That's cool. Everybody is egocentric, uh, but a human being when there is suffering, for example, if there is a pain because a stone fell on your uh, toe. You need to go for a doctor. You need to put an ice on that. That is a normal human mm. predicament because you are a clothed animal. You mm. want pleasure and pain. And you don't, you are, even when you are in a non duality, you don't shy away from the pain mm. and the pleasure. So the suffering, what I'm telling you, is the pain I have. I am asking for a solution. And I don't think there's anything wrong. And from Jim, I could get nothing. Yes. Or if Jim can explain to me in, an, in some other way, you know, like, you know, like Ilongo, you nope. couldn't understand, I would be willing to. Except, but that's what Robert was trying to tell. I understood Jim's yeah. uh, answer was that you couldn't. And uh, Robert was trying to tell that suffering is egocentric. Maybe, maybe not. But when there is pain, I want a solution. That's the reason why seekers come to, spir to spiritual world, that they expect mm -hmm. the teachers to give them a solution. And uh, Jim is telling me there is no solution. That's fine Absolutely. with me. I can only say that, could you maybe redo your work and say if there is anything you can remember, <laughs> you can tell us. You can always review the literature. <laughs> the review of literature is there. Yeah. Sometimes when, uh, you know, as a doctor, you make a wrong diagnosis or something's not jelly, you go back to the uh, roots, you go back to the history, the clinical science investigations, and then you check if anything is wrong and you redo it. That's, I think, a sign of, you know, a, a, a teacher who would like to keep on uh, refreshing what they are teaching. Because we are yeah. drawing a blank with the speakers. That's, you know, my, yeah. uh, I've been seeking for 30 years. And, uh, you know, when I come across uh, the brand of speakers like Jim Newman, initially when I hear Tony Parsons, it's fine initially, 20 years ago. But then after 24 years, Jim saying the same thing, I feel there should be an upgradation like a version 2021. <laughs> That's my earnest request <laughs> as a speaker. Oh, boy. oh, I love you, man. That's awesome. Yeah, thank you so much. And Robert, I understand where you come from. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I thought it was that. Steve speaking. You know what, Ilango? To tell you the truth, I don't think yeah. you understood what I said at all. Because if you did, there wouldn't be anything else to say. Yeah, that'd be the end. Of I'm the still listening. Okay, I'm going to. Say, I'm still listening. I, I will say it yeah. again. There is there yeah. is suffering in life on the physical level. Clearly, if you have a toothache, you have to go to the dentist to stop the toothache. That's clear. Yeah. No one would yeah. be enough of an idiot to say that doesn't exist. It exists. Yeah. But yeah. This psychological suffering is what we're is what what you're saying yes. is inevitable. Yes, yes, and yes. It is not inevitable. It's possible to be in a place of non-suffering psychologically. I understand. It's just possible. People are there. You're not there. And so you project this onto everyone. You're suffering. You're, you're projecting. You're, that's what I, when I, I, let me just finish. I am not saying that egocentricism is the cause of suffering. What I'm saying is you don't see what suffering really is because 
you, you imagine that everyone feels just the way you do, and they don't. Jim doesn't. He didn't agree with what you were saying. I don't either. I, I agree with what Jim was saying. Suffering is just the need for something to happen. If you don't need anything to happen, you just sit here. Okay. There's no suffering. If I get the toothache, then I need something to happen. I have to go to the dentist. But if I don't have a toothache and I'm just sitting here, I don't suffer psychologically. I don't need anything to happen. Nothing. I can just sit here. That's how we got Jim and I got together here in the first place. Apparently, he said, he said, I could just starve to death and that would be good. And I had said that a couple of years ago at a meeting that I don't mind, I'll sit on the park bench and starve to death. That's okay. Now that is, there's no suffering in it. No suffering in that. Robert, can I, can I ask now a question to you? Of course. Uh, I understood what you said. Uh, is there, a, I mean, Jim, you know, is vetoes any method at all to come out of the suffering? Do you have any suggestion to, to me that how do I move my psychological suffering, not body suffering, the psychological suffering? Is there a method? Is there a way? Is it, are, you, are you asking me what? I'm not clear. You, is there a uh, method? See, when I have a toothache, when I have a toothache, I go to the dentist. That is a body suffering. Yes. I am talking to you about what you just now spoke to me. Is the psychological suffering on an event or a non-event, which is the reason for human suffering, not the pain, the, su yeah. the psychological suffering. Psychological suffering, yes. And you're asking me, is there a method for ending that? Is that a, correct? The idea, the idea of, of the idea of a method is the suffering. Then how do I remove the psychological suffering? If I have a toothache, I have a dentist. If I have a psychological suffering, what do I do? Is the question. There's nothing to be done. When there is a when there is a dental problem, there is a solution. There is a method. There is a dentist. But, but when there's a psychological problem, what do I do? Short of going to a psychologist. Well, yes, on a on a on a relative level, you can go to a psychologist and have psychotherapy, and you, your suffering may change into something a, a bit less drastic and painful. That's possible, but to be without suffering, even the desire to be without suffering is, is a form of suffering. It, it's hard to get your mind around it, Ilongo. I know that, but that's the method. If there's a method, if there isn't a method. But if, if there were, if I were writing a method, the method would be snapped out of it. I understand. Okay. Thanks very much, Ilongo. Thank you so much, so much for giving me this opportunity. Yeah. Thank you, Jim. Yeah. Thanks. Nice to meet you. And thank you, non duality. Yes. <laughs> it's a pleasure, Ilongo. Take care. Pardon? Be well, Ilongo. I wish you all the best. Thank you so much. Yes. So, this, this is our last question, and we've reached the two hours mark. So, I would say uh, we, can, we can kind of wrap it up here, um, unless there is something that needs to be said. But otherwise, I would uh, like to thank you both very much, Jim Newman, for your for your work of in all of your life, and also Robert Salzman, very much. I love you both. Uh, thanks very much. You you've been good antidote for for a lot of uh, bullshit that I was holding before. So uh, thanks very much. Yeah, I say thanks I, as well. Yes, I want, I want to thank you, Jim, for participating in this. It was uh, very good to hear from you directly rather than your detractors. <laughs> Got a few of those. Yeah, lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you, Robert. Okay. Good to see you good both. Take good care of yourself, man. Be well. You too. Get better. Yes. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> I'm looking thank you so much. I made a 2021 consensus um, non-dual booklet this year that's going to come out. <laughs> <laughs> I love everybody. Thank you all very much. I'm going to click off now. Thank you, Jim. Thanks, Thanks, Amazon, Jim. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Robert. Bye. Thank you, Michael. And thank you, Marcus. Thank you, Yasmin. Thank you, Nathimudia. Thanks. Thank you, Emerson. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you Thanks, all for setting it up. Have a nice day. It was Marcus evening. and Michael. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Rita. Thank you, Marcus and Michael. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.